Hello once more. Uh, what gets us busy in this video is to talk about this very special function, the Linhar function. Very special function. So if you are aware of uh, uh, maybe problems like the SD Hamiltonian with uh, when you have one impurity on a continuum of electrons or the random phase approximation, polarizability um, of a material medium. So then in all these cases you will have to deal with the Linhar function. And then um, I think that uh, this video will provide you the necessary means to understand what are the forms that will encounter, uh, why is it integrated in the way it's integrated, and, and oh, I mean, look, this form for the exchange correlation, where does it come from? So I just want to go through the very basic derivation of the Linhar function uh, to give you some tools of understanding um, what you see, for instance, in, in textbooks like uh, Mahan, many particle physics. Okay, so then uh, the very, um, let me raise this uh, reference here. So the very basic definition of the linear function is the one that I'm uh, just enclosing. So L of Q equal to one over uh, the density of states evaluated at the Fermi energy. Uh, and this integral where you have uh, the difference above uh, in the numerator of the um, Fermi functions evaluated at uh, different energies and uh, divided by the difference in energies at which the Fermi function is evaluated. Um, so this is the definition for the linear function. So um, now, um, if we elaborate a little bit, so then we can split the integral here and then it comes to look something like this and then we can just rewrite the linear function as it's enclosed here. So um, let me just uh, close it like this. And then now um, we have we want to specify this term because this is for a, a, um, some given energy. So then if we consider a parabolic band like the one we have here. So then the calculation of this term looks as follows. So then you just replace each of the energies you just do some subtractions you have to keep into account you just keep in mind that these uh, wave vectors um, are act as vectors so then you have to take into account the dot product here and then um, so you just consider theta as the direction between the vectors k and q that's what theta is the one we have here and then you end up at something like this and then uh, just to, let's say for, for generality, we just write the term that we're seeking for in terms of what we just found, um, which is one divided by h bar square k q, where k and q are the magnitudes of the wave vectors k and q, divided by m times this factor cosine theta plus q divided by 2k. This will become crucial. Uh, from now on, when we uh, derive the basic form of the Linhar function. Um, so now um, that um, that's a specify, so we will specify a different term, so let's see. So what we specify here, it was 1 over E sub k plus q minus E sub k. Now we have to specify a little different term, which is E sub k minus um, minus uh, e sub k minus q. So then we just replace the same parabolic bands as we did for the previous case. And in a very, let's say, similar fashion, we arrive at this term here that I enclose. Now, I have then two terms, the two terms that are uh, showing up in the basic formula for the Linhar function. So we just proceed to replace them and then um, in the following form. So then we have specified these two terms. So then now uh, we have to do something with the linear function. So we just replace the two terms. And since we're integrating over all the K space, so then we have a triple integration here. We use the spherical coordinates since we have the direction between Q and K. So we should do these spherical coordinates 
we have the we have the spherical coordinates Jacobian here so then we expand uh, the integral we write the integral in the following form and uh, what we do is uh, just let me uh, see that you have uh, that I think I didn't explain a step here so here what I do uh, between this step and this step is that I change coordinates so for instance here I just leave the stuff that is here but here I take in the in the second term I take k plus q I take it uh, to k so I change I do this change of variable that means that k just goes to k minus q okay just I forgot to mention this in it this is a clue step this is something that you will see a lot when you deal with impurities this is always done just this uh, very basic uh, change of coordinates so now that I have just reviewed this so when, when we evaluate the integral so then we proceed as follows so we take what what can be taken outside the the integrand and then we write it in this form now we write the integral with respect to phi this is of course 2 pi here okay uh, we write the integral with respect to k here and with respect to theta here which is the first integral we're going to perform so then we now that we have integral with respect to, to phi here we have to focus first on this integral with respect to theta okay now um, mm, up to this point we cannot do so much uh, if we don't specify what is the Fermi function and then the Fermi function depends on temperature so for zero temperature what you have is that um, you have this is the Fermi function if the chemical potential is zero and for um, for finite temperature this this function let me do it in red starts smearing out like this see so then you can see that if I have the temperature pretty much this is for t different than zero but if I have the temperature really close to zero so in the limit of t tending to zero this is pretty, pretty easy to, to, to integrate so because this is just constant for values of energy less than zero and it's zero for values of energy greater than zero okay so then that's what we're going to do so then uh, we're just going to say that uh, in the limit of t equal to zero the Fermi Dirac distribution is equal to one for values of energy below the Fermi L level that I just in the last illustration I take it I took EF equal to zero and as such we may proceed as follows so then that condition is just done by replacing the Fermi function equal to one and the integration in the K vector goes from zero to K Fermi so then that's what we have to do okay and this is this is where we meet the condition of zero temperature here okay so then uh, we can perform uh, some substitution so we say lambda is cosine theta the lambda is minus sine theta the theta now when lambda is minus one or if lambda is minus one theta is equal to pi and if lambda is one theta is equal to zero then we can of course change this um, integration limits here to one and minus one here when we integrate with respect to the lambda and then we just change the um, integration limits so that means that we swap terms here to keep the sign okay and we arrive at this very expression that you have here moreover uh, we can expand um, after uh, of course after we evaluate this the integration limits for lambda so we end up of this um, with this term here and when we do just some little algebra here reminding that the um, logarithm of a divided by b is equal to logarithm of a minus logarithm of b and if it's a multiplication then that's a plus okay so then we just use that property here 
and then we end up with this expression. Replacing for the density of states of the free electron gas, then we end up at this other expression. Now, a suitable factorization in the argument of the logarithm of the above expression transform L's of Q into the following expression. Now, up to here, we're almost done. We're almost there with the Linhart function. Okay, so then, uh, but we have to just work a little bit with this integration with respect to K here. Okay, so then um, we're just left with this term. So the above integral can be evaluated using integration by parts. Now, what are the substitutions that I have to make? So let's see, let's take du equal to this k times this dk, as we can see here. Then u is equal to 1 half k squared. And then let's say that v is equal to this logarithm. Okay? So dv can be calculated as it's shown here to give this expression okay let me just erase this here um, like this we enclose dv dk so of course then dv is equal to minus q dk divided by k squared minus q squared divided by 4 which we will see I guess in the next page and then when we replace this the integral just remember this formula for integration board parts becomes this we just perform uh, uh, we just evaluate the limits in the first term and we get this now we have to carry out this throughout the calculation because we're dealing with the second part of the integral so then this is what we're doing we just um, to make it easier we just add and subtract the same quantity here upstairs we split that integral into the two integrals that can be easily calculated and then uh, we proceed in the following way we keep on going with this term here this term here goes from one of the integrals and now we have to integrate this with using a method that's called partial fractions here then we can after here, after we use partial fractions, these two integrals are just some easy integrals to do. So then uh, we just have to determine A and B as uh, it is done here. This is to determine A and B. And when we determine A and B, then we're just ready to go. So we keep on going with this term, as I said. But now that we determine A and B for the partial fraction expansion so then uh, we can calculate these two integrals here which give these two logarithms and then after um, just replacing the limits and evaluating the limits of this um, operation so then we are left with this term here and we finally arrived at this integral which is not complicated but it can be long I'm just trying to show all the steps so um, then we arrive at this uh, result for the integral. Um, and of course, um, um, so we can write the Linhart function more or less in this form. This is one way of the Linhart function that, I mean, we can say that we, we're done with the calculation. So, but what we're going to do is, that, is just we're going to say that um, this Fermi energy is equal to this parabolic form. Okay, so we replace the Fermi energy here. We keep on going with all the uh, Fermi um, wave vectors. We arrive at this expression, and now we can simplify more or less the Linhart function, saying that this, just uh, the Fermi wave vector, is equal to this. And then I can just uh, enclose this more or less final form for the Linhart function. This is not the way you're going to find the linear function in books. So then I will go a little bit farther. If you elaborate here, just uh, as I can show you here, then uh, by making this substitution, this expression that we have here will turn into this. And this is the linear function that you will find in books. For instance, uh, if you 
go and surf in chapter 5 of uh, Gerald Mahan book Gerald chapter 5 Gerald Mahan the book is uh, called I have it here the book is called uh, many particle physics many particle physics so in chapter 5 you will encounter this linear function everywhere so I just wanted to provide let's say some um, some intuition for uh, how to arrive at the forms of the linear function that you will encounter in these textbooks um, there are some uh, useful limits of the linear functions that you can evaluate as well so for instance you can calculate what happens when q tends to zero okay when q tends to zero x tends to zero and then you can see throughout through this calculation that the limit is equal to one and in the same way you can of course see what happens when q uh, tends to twice the fermi wave vector which means that x tends to one and the limit is equal to a half and this is just the calculation is a bit long but it's a step by step so I'm very sure that you will be able to follow this calculation through all its steps and just arrive at this answer here. So then, um, let me see. Yes, I think that's uh, all for the linear function. I hope this is going to be useful for you. Just trying to uh, provide full details of what we encounter in condensed matter. And if you have any suggestions, for topics, for content that you would like to see in the channel, just please uh, just drop a message in the comments. And if you like the video, just like it. And if you like the channel, subscribe. Thank you very much.